This next presentation is on the comparative analysis of image processing algorithms for airport security. My name is Sasha Calloway. I'm Jeffrey Chang. My name is Alexander Contrati. My name is David Fu. My name is Harshika Galavi. And my name is Jacob Bahuletz. The TSA performs millions of image scans of travelers through security checkpoints. These scans are essential in preventing threats from entering public modes of transportation. The current system has many flaws, and a study done by ProPublica has revealed that these scans have a 54% false positivity rate. Our goal in order to solve this problem is to be able to test different machine learning models and determine which model is most effective in detecting weapons and threats on passengers. We will do this by taking in the TSA scans given to us by a Kaggle competition and analyzing the body scan in 16 different angles. Machine learning is the ability for an algorithm to process patterns in data and improve through data input. The algorithms make alterations within their hidden workings to effectively learn from the data being inputted and become better at performing at a specified task. Our algorithm uses supervised learning, which first uses a labeled training data set and becomes more accurate the more data it consumes. Various forms of machine learning can be commonly found in technologies meant to mimic human abilities, such as text recognition or image recognition, which we use to analyze the scans. Neural networks are able to help systems analyze and classify data through pattern recognition. The basis of neural networks lies in nodes, sometimes called neurons, and these nodes are able to pass data between each other. The nodes are coupled with random coefficients at first, known as weights, and these weights are able to increase or decrease the significance that each node holds. The training algorithm tunes the weights to build successful neural network. These train weights are then applied to the testing data to directly classify, in this case, images. These nodes are also classified into layers, of which there are three types, input layer, hidden layers, and output layer. The input layer takes in the data, the hidden layer processes the data, and the output layer transfers the data out of the network. To aid us in the construction of our neural networks, we used Python libraries such as TensorFlow and Keras. So the first thing that we had to do was divide our data set, which is made up of many TSA scans, into a set for training the model and a set for testing the model. We then divided the human body into 17 different zones so different models could analyze different regions of the body instead of analyzing the entire body the entire time. To do so, we created a .csv file to hold pixel coordinates that bounded each of the 17 zones. Then we fed, the we fed the zones that we wanted to analyze into our program, which then created two pixel coordinates that bounded the entire region of interest. As we said before, the TSA scans provide 16 different perspectives of the same person. To use different perspectives, we use images from different perspectives and line them up side by side to form one large image. Genetic algorithms are based on the theory of evolution and natural selection as proposed by Charles Darwin. The genetic algorithm is able to optimize the parameters of a network in order to enhance its performance, which are then passed into the neural networks. These parameters were the number of neurons, the number of layers, the activation function, and the optimizer. There are five phases to the genetic algorithm. The first step is to create an initial population with all the possible combinations of parameters. The second step is to create a fitness function that assigns scores to each combination based on accuracy. The third step is to select individuals based on their score, dropping out the ones with low fitness scores. The parents of each generation are then mated to create children individuals. The last step is to mutate each generation of combinations. Data augmentation is a pre-processing strategy we apply to our models in which we modify our current data set in order to generate new data which can be fed into our model. Now, some examples of the way data can be modified are rotating the image, zooming in the image, cropping the image, shifting the image horizontally and vertically, or affecting the brightness of the image. Data augmentation is beneficial as the model is exposed to data that is different from the normal set and therefore can be trained to recognize slightly different versions of the original data, which will in turn increase its accuracy when testing the data set. Logistic regression is a very basic binary classifier. A logistic regression algorithm takes the inputs and runs them through a model to determine its quote-unquote class. In this case, it's whether the person has a threat or not. It is based off of a sigmoid function, the parent function of which you can find at the top right. The model finds the coefficients of B0 and B1 for the sig of T graph using a training set. To classify the output as containing a threat or not, the model runs, uh, runs the inputs into the function and if the value is greater than 0.5, it classifies it positively and vice versa. This could be considered a very simple neural net 
a single neuron. This model was ran with and without data augmentation. Convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, are a subtype of neural network that are designed for image processing. There are two main components. First comes convolution, where filters are passed over the image to create new versions of the image with different pixels emphasized. Then it comes pooling, where the, where the highest pixel values are extracted and, create, created it and made into a smaller version of the image to reduce computational power necessary. After several layers of convolution and pooling, the results are flattened out and passed through a neural network. The advantage of the CNN is that it is able to identify spatial features like lines and edges that a regular neural network is unable to capture. The next network that we used was a long short-term memory network, or an LSTM. Now CNNs analyze each image individually during training, but LSTMs are designed to analyze a sequence of images, such as a TSA scan. This means that if the LSTM sees a potential threat in one perspective, it can keep that in mind as it analyzes the rest of the perspectives. LSTMs keep track of a cell state as a record of everything it has already learned, then uses three gates to forget, learn, and remember all the necessary information for proper image classification. For our LSTM, we used a 32-unit LSTM layer after the convolutional layers, but before the hidden layers, which were used for classification. The four evaluation metrics that we use to assess our models are test accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Um, so in our scenario, test accuracy is the number of correct decisions made over total decisions. Precision is the measure of the number of people flagged, correct or not, at the airport, where recall is the measure of the people correctly predicted and flagged by our algorithm, which is more important in our case. And the F1 score takes precision and recall into account as an overall value of the model's success. There are many parameters that we have to set that affect how well the model performs. The main parameters we dealt with were the number of layers in the network, the number of neuron in each layer, and the number of epochs that we trained for. Since it's hard to predetermine the optimal values for these parameters, the first round of training usually, usually yields poor results. Poor results can be classified under two categories. First category is underfitting, in which the model performs poorly on both the training data and the new testing data. Underfitting can occur when the model is not complex enough or does not run the proper amount of training iterations and cannot learn the patterns presented in the data. To combat overfitting, we increase the number of layers and or neurons per layer, and we also slow down the learning rate. Second category is overfitting, in which the model performs well on the training data, but poorly on the testing data. Overfitting can occur when the model is too complex or runs for too many training iterations and learns all the irrelevant noise presented in the training data. To combat overfitting, we use dropout and regularization. We also decrease the number of layers and or the number of neurons per layer. We established our logistic regression as a baseline so we could compare the other algorithms against it. After we added data augmentation, the accuracy and recall improved considerably. The genetic algorithm was added on a regular neural network and was able to optimize its functions as evidenced by the high accuracy. The convolutional neural network saw much better results than the logistic regression, which was expected because CNNs are designed to work especially well with image classification. The LSTM also saw incredible success, with its results exactly matching the CNN. Both the CNN and the LSTM only incorrectly identified one image out of the 100 test images in the test set, meaning that they both had two, almost two flawless runs. The goal of our project was to find the optimal algorithm for implementation in airport security. We concluded that the best algorithms are the CNN and the LSTM, as they both performed extremely well and better than the others. We believe that with further work, these two models can be viable for implementation in airport security. Considering the research that we have done, in the future we would like to acquire more data, especially those with positive examples, so that they can be further evaluated in order to provide better results. We would also like to analyze the data from a full body perspective, since our current data only analyzes a specific zone or a specific angle. And the goal would be to prove that these models work more than just in concept. Lastly, we would like to take all the strengths of each of the models that we worked with and implement them in conjunction to create a stronger model. With our research, we hope to provide insight in using machine learning for TSA security scans. We would like to thank the following people and corporate sponsors for providing a positive and educational experience at the New Jersey Governor's School of Engineering and Technology this year. Thank you.